I like playing modded DRG and wanted to share some tips to help you with difficulties beyond Hazard 5. Modded difficulty lobbies can seem intimidating, but the truth is knowledge about strategies and class behaviour will increase your chances of survival. This tutorial will cover Driller, Holds, Engineer, Repellent, Gunner, Pushing, Scout and Health. First I wanted to show builds for each class and some effective team compositions, but realised this would be a lot of information all at once. These topics will be covered in the next video, and if that's something you'd like to see, please subscribe to let me know. For the time being I'll be talking in the context of a team of four with all classes, using sticky fuel on driller and volatile bullets on gunner. This composition is seen as one of the most powerful in the game, and is a great option for new teams to find their footing. Enemies on fire can be eliminated quickly with volatile bullets, including menaces, oppressors, praetorians, wardens, goo bombers, detonators, spitballers, and breeders. Engineer and Scout have ignition options on some weapons too, so consider bringing these if you want to help your gunner take out these key targets. Let's begin with this guy. Drill him and grill him. Driller's main duty is acting as a buffer between the oncoming swarms and the team. Driller's primary weapon will dictate build composition. If you choose fire, ice or goo, the team should build choosing complementary options. I recommend starting with the flamethrower, as sticky fuel is a good template for how to play Driller generally. The team is most efficient when staying near Driller, as grunt types and swarmers won't be a threat, leaving teammates to deal with enemies that Driller finds tougher. In terms of team movement, Driller is a leader, directing the team to new areas, whether that is forwards through the next dirt patch or retreating toward a tunnel. They are also essential in the creation of a hold. A hold is an area in the cave where the team can fortify, resupply, and regroup. Driller's tools are ideal for terraforming the map, as drills, C4, and thin containment field on the EPC make quick work of terrain. Hold design depends largely on the biome, terrain, and objective. Generally speaking, there are two principal types, tunnel holds and open holds. Tunnel holds are typically used in enclosed spaces during announced swarms on egg hunts or mining expeditions, and also in salvage operation starting tunnels. Open holds are usually wider, with an emphasis on open space, and can be useful for point extraction and refinery missions. As well as this, both of these hold types work well when defending salvage objectives or the hacking pod. There are also some biome-dependent hold additions that I recommend such as roller traps on salt pits or hot rock halls on magma core. In some cases, only one class is required to construct a hold. The one-man band, Engineer. It's all about securing the caves here. Engineer is a hold custodian, as they can refill turrets, update repellent, and cover any holes made by incoming or used resupply pods. Repellent Additive is an upgrade on the platform gun that makes enemies path around the platforms you place. Platform holds are nice for point extractions as it gives Driller freedom to focus on objectives. They also work well during fuel stops and the Heartstone fight on escort duty missions. Repellent placement can improve a hold by directing bugs toward choke points. This makes it easier for the team to deal with ambient waves and announce swarms. Friend of the channel Memtransmute has written a detailed repellent guide, which is linked in the description if you'd like to know the finer details of this mechanic. In the absence of a scout, NG acts as substitute artillery for the team, dealing with ranged targets such as Spitters, Spreaders, and Macterra. Unlike other classes, Engineer lacks many options for a speedy escape, which will make playing them feel tougher when starting to go above Hazard 5. If you find yourself going down more than you're used to as Engineer, don't worry, as the skill jump is noticeably higher for this class in particular. The best advice is to stick with your gunner and driller. Doing this will ensure your own safety as well as theirs. Nothing will stop us now! Next up is Gunner. Shields are the most important utility that they can bring to the team. Since shields are limited in supply, I recommend saving them for one of two situations. First is an obvious one, protecting your team. 
Shields are excellent at creating space for yourself or teammates to revive, resupply, and terminate priority targets. Proactive shield use is preferred to reactive. Placing a shield before someone goes down means the team doesn't need to spend time in the shield reviving. You should also be aware of your shield cooldown time, so you can have a shield ready in the event of a suddenly dangerous situation. Shields can also be used for what is known as pushing. This involves throwing a shield where the team intends to advance while clearing spitballers, breeders, and leeches. Refinery, point extraction, and egg hunt missions are examples of starts that have lots of these threats near the landing zone. Pushing after the drop pod immunity runs out is recommended, so you can clear those threats and potentially look for a place to hold and stabilize. On to our last dwarf. Scout is the most nitro-focused of the four classes. This may seem like I'm stating the obvious, Scout gets the Nitro, but you may be surprised to know that many struggle with this. What I've lovingly dubbed Battle Scouting is something I've come across a lot during my time in modern difficulty. This is where a Scout will drop into a difficulty they haven't tried, only to be consumed with chipping away at the horde of enemies instead of helping acquire Nitro for the team. This can create an ammo deficit, which can lead to a wipe, especially if Scout goes down with minimal Nitro deposited. Every second counts with Scout, so your first priority of the mission is feeding your team Nitro. Once a comfortable amount has been deposited, Scout can help move the main objectives forward with Driller. As well as focusing on ranged and grabbing enemies, Scout should try to help the team with the information callouts. Places to hold, where swarms are coming from, which enemies are on fire, and where to push are all solid examples of callouts that will help your team coordinate and react in good time. Finally, we come to health. Health and staying up is critical. There is a loop that can occur more in modern difficulty missions that I shall refer to as Death's Door. This is where you're repeatedly going down due to low health after being revived. If you don't have time to go for red sugar, a resupply, or a teammate revive, it will feel like you are living in a cycle of being revived, moving a few feet, then falling on your face. The best way to avoid this is to bring breathing room on your shield rig. This grants double the invulnerability time after revival. Equipping this will give you more time to do helpful things, like saving a teammate, resupplying, or getting back in the fight. Touching briefly on perks, Iron Will, Resupplier, and Vampire are a very important trio to help you avoid Death's Door. You may know Iron Will to be the last stand perk, which is saved for the last possible moment, so that a team member can clutch and potentially recover the run. This is a mindset you will have to unlearn, as using Iron Will too late when everyone is down can render a mission unwinnable. If the tide of the battle is leaning toward the Glyphids and you are down, using Iron Will is important to prevent a team wipe. Iron Will usage is also recommended when separated from the team by some distance. If no revival is coming anytime soon, it is best to get yourself back up as soon as possible. This can also be helpful if you have Nitro to deposit, or you are in possession of some potentially crucial firepower. If no red sugar is around you, Resupplier and Vampire also work well with Iron Will. These perks let you back into the fight after a quick resupply or meleeing a bug for health. I hope this video has been useful to you, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment, join the Discord community, or interact with me on my semi-regular Twitch streams.